This lesson deals with a source transformation example. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 8, starting on page 44. Suppose we go back and relook at example 814, and this time let's solve it using source transformations in the frequency domain. Now we can do that because when we proved source transformations in the time domain, we used Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's laws to do the proof. So let's go back to that example. It was on page 39. Let's grab the step one equivalent circuit in the frequency domain. And now we're going to solve for V sub R using source transformations. So we're going to take a voltage source in series with an impedance, and likewise one over here, and convert it into a current source in parallel with the same impedance. So let's do that. The current source will point in the same direction as the plus sign, and the value of the current is the voltage divided by the impedance. Since we're doing division, let's put these both into polar form. Got this one already in polar form. So it's 100 at angle 0, and this would be 10 at angle 90. Ratio is 10, 0 minus 90, minus 90 is a final phase angle. Have in parallel with that then J10 ohms. Over here, we'll take the 120 at angle 30 and divide it by J30, which is just 30 at angle 90. So that ratio is 4, 30 minus 90 is minus 60. So now we're going to solve for the voltage across here. Now, when things are in parallel, we can take them in any order. So here we've got a capacitor and an inductor with the same impedance, but the opposite sign. So let's combine these two first. So the product over the sum would be something divided by zero, and that means an open circuit. We say that these two are resonating with each other. What I'm left over with then is just a 20 ohm resistor and an inductance of J30 ohms. So the product over the sum would be the equivalent impedance. I'll call that Z1. That's really in parallel with an open circuit because of these two resonating with each other. So the product over the sum would be J600, and so that'd be 600 angle 90. And then I'll punch this in my calculator. I'll get something a little bit longer than 30. And then I'll be in the first quadrant with an angle a little bit more than 45 degrees. So it seems reasonable. This ratio is 16.639, and then 90 minus 56.3 is 33.69. Okay, the current that flows into the impedance Z is gonna be this current plus this current. So it'd be 10 at angle minus 90 and forward angle minus 60. As we're adding these two, I'll have to put them into rectangular form. So let's convert this then, this would be a minus J10. And then punching this in my calculator, I'd get four times the cosine of minus 60 plus J times the sine of minus 60. And that turns out to be two minus J 3.464. So now we can add the real, add the imaginary. So I just have two, and then the sum of these two gives me minus 13.464. Because I'm multiplying, I'll put this into polar form. Again, I'll push this in my calculator and I two inputs and two outputs. Get the real and imaginary part in. We'll get the magnitude and angle out. Again, you have to look at your own particular calculator and see how you do that. Again, you might need that little manual that comes with it. The length here will be a little bit longer than this. And then the angle will be in the fourth quadrant, but close to minus 90 because this is so much smaller than this. That seems reasonable. So we'll multiply these two and we'll add the angles. I get 226.49 and an angle of minus 47.86 degrees. Lastly, to come into the time domain, all I need to do is put the cosine of omega t between the magnitude and the angle. So my answer then is 226.49 times the cosine of the quantity 5 kT minus 47.86 degrees. And the units here would be volts. This is the same answer we had on page 41. And this is an example using source transformations.